Comments by the Jackson County State's Attorney are stirring debate about the public trust in the Carbondale Police. At a meeting this month, Mike Carr called for an evaluation of the police department's leadership. News 3's Fauna Haile Selassie has been looking into this story, and Fauna, what prompted Carr's comments? Well, Carr says it isn't just one issue. He believes a number of high-profile cases have led to distrust of the Carbondale Police Department. And Carr says it's a problem city leaders need to address. If you ask residents in Northeast Carbondale their perception of the police department, images like this standoff last year often come to mind. You can't come out in riot gear into a community. Jackson County resident Daryl Backstrom says there's a long history of distrust between many minority communities and police, not just in Carbondale. In order to trust someone, you'd have to know who they are. And the people only get to know the, the police department when they're knocking down their doors, when they're arresting them. The difference now, distrust of the Carbondale police seems to be spreading further than just one segment of the city's population. The result of several high profile cases going unsolved, like the 2011 death of Molly Young, where many suspected her then boyfriend, Carbondale dispatcher, Richard Minton, and the mysterious death of SIU student, Pravin Varghese in February. Then there's the 2011 theft of the police chief's gun, later used in a murder. Public perception is important for your department. The bad perception led Jackson County State's Attorney Mike Carr to speak out at the last meeting of the Carbondale Human Relations Commission. Wouldn't it be nice to have a police department when they said something about an investigation that the community trusted? Carr says the distrust affects his job too. Witnesses won't come forward, making cases weaker. He says he has faith and trust in the Carbondale PD, but perception is reality, and it's up to the department's leaders to fix it. I think the community members would like to see more involvement from the chief uh, and, and involvement uh, going into their neighborhoods. 12-year-old Javon Watson and his aunt Latasha Matthews agree with Carr, insisting they only see police when there's a problem. Some police need to just like come by, see how other people are doing, stop, see how how they're feeling, see if anything been wrong in the neighborhood, and see how people are doing. Just talk just to stuff. people. Just talk to people. Chief Jody O'Gwin says that's easier said than done. There's already a requirement for officers to get out into the community, but time is limited. When you have the amount of officers that we have responding to 70,000 plus calls for service per year, uh, it, leaves a little, it leaves a little time for officers to be able to get out uh, and interact as I would like them to on, you know, uh, a personal basis. O'Gwin doesn't believe the distrust is warranted. He insists he was the victim of a burglary when his gun went missing. State police investigated the Molly Young case, not Carbondale, and his officers put all their efforts into finding Pravin Varghese. O'Gwin says when the department is silent about a case, the public misconstrues it as hiding a nefarious agenda. There are a lot of conspiracy theorists out there who believe that there's something else going on that there's not. Uh, and that it's it's popular to do that. Ultimately, the Carbondale city manager and council have the authority to force any changes if warranted. But leaders have varying positions on the problem. This has been an issue for decades. It's not anything new. The goal of the police department is to serve and protect. And a lot of the perception now is that they just arrest and harass. Human Relations Chair Gerald Hendricks says the commission will be making some recommendations to the Carbondale City Council next month. There'll be suggestions on how the police department can foster better relations with the community.